Hi, everyone. If you're going somewhere, uh, which is six or four hours away from Taiwan, which city will you choose? According to the research, less than 1% people will choose the middle seat. Actually, nobody wants to sit between, you know, the, you know, the annoying people like those photos. <laughs> they annoy you, interrupt you. If I, I'm the guy in the red circle, I swear to God, I'll cry my eyes out. But it could be in another way. You know, surrounded by handsome guys with the most charming smile you've ever seen. <laughs> or, you know, sit between those beautiful legs. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Well, by sitting in the middle, you have twice chance to talk to strangers. But more importantly, you can discover the world they experience from their point of view. And before you explore, explore the place you are going to, you can have an experience on the, on the sky. So now, we know the benefit by choosing the middle seat. But how do we do this? How? So this is why you guys are here. I assume everyone knows about the personal space. There are four of them, uh, public, social, personal, and intimacy. Obviously, the intimacy space is the most difficult one for people to allow strangers to step in. But on the airplane, you are actually in the intimacy circle. So it's like playing a tennis with the net down. Pretty easy, not a big deal. The other reason of, uh, uh, another reason the personal, ex personal space existing is because of the unconscious self-protection. You have to wait. You have to wait until an uh, invisible connection between you and the person. As time goes by, uh, they will feel more comfortable sitting next to you. So, as, uh, well, once the ac acceptance surfaces, it's time for the unavoidable interaction. What's that? Saying, excuse me, and go to the bathroom. And you'll do this again when you're back. After, after you are back on your seat with the second unavoidable interaction, congratulations. This is the best timing for you to discover a whole new world. Oh, it reminds me a movie. A whole new world, a fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no, or where to go to say hi. Uh, <laughs> do you fly often? No, not For business or travel? OK, nice meeting. So for now, you're on your own. You're on your own. Enjoy the conversation, but here's one rule you have to follow. You have to sense if the person wants to talk to you or not. <laughs> Don't be you know, this kind of annoying person. Also, beware of this. No matter how good looking the person sitting next to you is, he or she might just want to have sex with you. <laughs> guys, guys, I, uh, well, I know what you're thinking. You might think, if a beautiful woman can have sex with me, I would like to sacrifice to satisfy myself. That's disgusting. Don't. Don't do that. Never judge a book by its cover. And the point is, the point is to see what they see, but not what you see. Those people might have the most beautiful mind in the world to blow yours. I mean, blow your mind. <laughs> so, okay. So let me introduce some people I met on, on the airplane. A British, a British professor from the Washington University. 30 years ago, he moved to, ta moved to Japan without a friend, a job, the ability to speak Japanese. For what? For love. His girlfriend has been his wife for more than 20 years with two kids. Aww. And a CEO of a real estate in China, uh, he was uh, flying to Japan for a vacation with his family. And he introduced me his two beautiful daughters. So I guess he want me to call him like a dad or something. And a bilingual journalist from the biggest Japanese uh, publisher. He is quite active, and recently he is helping the TEDx Tokyo while interviewing some Japanese artists. I also met a cook, engineer, and farmer, accountant, and so forth. Their stories were fantastic, and what they have seen was absolutely the whole new world to me. So again, don't be distracted by the appearance. See what they see, but not what you see. Got it? Good. <laughs> so for now, you'll choose 
the middle C on the airplane. Thank you very much.